big story, of course. Uh, fire's still in the headlines. Big shout out to everybody suffering in Victoria and New South Wales. Big shout outs to people who are helping. You're wonderful. But the heat has also been on. Greens leader Richard Di Natale, seen here, boring a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Di Natale is under pressure following these comments he made linking bushfires to climate change. And hoo -hoo, you gotta look out, that's a, that's a big topic, everyone. Very sensitive, a lot of controversy. Let's find out what he said, here we go. We are seeing climate change in our everyday lives have an impact on the risk of bushfires to our communities. Right now, we would normally be talking about the end of the bushfire season, and yet, here we are, with bushfires ravaging my home state and indeed uh, my community. <laughs> <laughs> that was a clip that was fucking boring. Come on! I wanted some crazy green shit. You know, Adani is Satan, coal is a war criminal, recycle the polar bears. You know, green shit. <laughs> Who could possibly get outraged by that? Look, this is absolutely ridiculous uh, from the. Uh, uh, comments from the Greens, they are insensitive. In the Greens political party, uh, they can't let any one of these opportunities go by without trying to make a tawdry, self-interested political point. This is not the time to politicise a disaster like this. Yes, the Prime Minister is right. This is not the time to politicise this disaster, which is why Turnbull himself toured the area to make sure no one showed up to politicise it. <laughs> Thank you for your service, sir. <laughs> You're a goddamn hero. Bring it in, baby. Here we go. Just keeping track of all these. <laughs> Thanks very much. It's good. It's good to keep across it all. <laughs> Prime Minister also took the opportunity to give the Greens a science lesson. Well, David, as you know very well, you can't attribute any particular event, whether it's a flood or a fire or a drought uh, to, or a storm, to, uh, to, uh, you know, to climate change. That's true. You can't link a single natural disaster to climate change. Yet the Greens seem to do it every single time. In fact, it seems as if the Greens politicising natural disasters is becoming more and more frequent and of a higher intensity each time. At this rate, <laughs> by 2050, the Earth's surface could be entirely uninhabitable because <laughs> it's been so politicised by the Greens. <laughs> anyway, it's a good thing that you can't link one single event to climate change because otherwise we'd all have a problem with that time Turnbull toured flood-affected Tasmania during the 2016 election campaign and warned that natural disasters would become more severe as climate change gets worse. <laughs> you see, Dean Natale, now's not the time to politicise climate change. That time was too Two years ago, you see? <laughs> you missed your chance. Bring out the board, baby. <laughs> Spin it around, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Dean Natale's also been copying friendly fire following the Paul Green showing during the Batman by election, and he's had enough. The Guardian is reporting that Dean Natale has called for a purge. <laughs> oh, yes, a green purge. <laughs> I've actually done the Greens purge before. Lost two kilos, got very gassy. No good. <laughs> Epic gamble. It's all heating up in the Greens. One of Western Australia's most senior members of the Greens party called for Dean Natale to resign, describing his politics as explicitly centrist. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact, explicitly centrist is also the name of Emmanuel Macron's sex tape. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the Commonwealth Games. Well, all eyes are on the Gold Coast for the Commonwealth Games. No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> Preparations are underway, though, and uh, we're getting an insight into what the Commonwealth Games village is going to involve, what they got there. Cue the recitation of various numbers. The village is made up of 1,100 apartments and more than 80 townhouses. We'll do six to 8,000 serves of eggs every day, about 30,000 serves of fresh fruit. Here in the food hall, 20,000 meals will be prepared each and every day. Daily, that means 3,400 pillow changes, <laughs> 7,000 towels changed, 1,000 kilos of laundry powder used and more than 17,000 rolls of toilet paper used over the games period. Who gives a shit? <laughs> Why does any of this matter? Yeah. I've never been watching the Commonwealth Games, seeing elite athletes pushing their bodies to the limit and thought, oh, how are they doing for bog roll? It's never come up. <laughs> to be fair, I've also never watched the Commonwealth Games, so I guess I can't really... <laughs> what else have they got in there? There's even a smoothie bar and hairdressing salon and a stockpile of condoms. Ah, yes, the condoms! 
major sporting events. The rule is you got to mention how many condoms are kicking around. <laughs> 100,000 will be available to athletes in the village in the Commonwealth Games this year. 100,000 condoms. Obviously, that's 90,000 for the lawn bowlers. Then divvy up the rest. <laughs> <laughs> Those lawn bowlers. Horny rats, I say. <laughs> horny, horny rats. <laughs> Why are we fascinated with the condoms? There are other world events. We never talk about how many condoms are at those. You know, I never heard delegates will be provided 2,000 condoms at this week's G20 summit. That never comes up. <laughs> oh, yes, tense scene today as US President Donald Trump met with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. 15 condoms were provided. <laughs> and now at the Vatican, the cardinals begin their sacred tradition of choosing a new pope with the help of zero condoms. <laughs> <laughs> I like those lawn bowlers. People in the Vatican love raw dogging it. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's just fun to say things. 